Rebecca Brown of USA, Demon Spirits of Anger. Anger is a problem that is rapidly growing all around the world, every society sees disastrous and violent outbreaks of anger, which often result in the deaths of other people, anger is a big problem within the body of Christ as well, we have been amazed to see how often a Christian will disagree with another Christian about something, and as a result set out to destroy that person, or, at a minimum, completely break fellowship with them, this is all because of uncontrolled anger, we know that this is not pleasing to our Lord, we should have the grace to be able to disagree with one another without trying to destroy or sever fellowship with each other. Let us first look and see exactly what God's word has to say about our anger, then I will outline for you the solution that God gave to Daniel and I through direct revelation, it has worked for us, and for countless others, be angry and do not sin, do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. God created human beings with the ability to experience a whole range of emotions, anger is one of these, however, it is God's command, that we control our anger. We are to stay in control so that when we experience anger we do not allow ourselves to fall into sin as a result, how rare this is. When the average person gets angry he or she sins immediately. If nothing else, through their tongue and the hurtful words they say, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you, with all malice. Did you know that when you sin in your anger you completely shut down the functioning of the Holy Spirit in your life? This is a very grave matter. Brothers and sisters, we are completely dependent on the Holy Spirit to enable us to live pleasing lives for our Lord, when we grieve Him through our sinful anger, we stop His work in our lives, God's word is clear, we are to put all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking and malice out of our lives. This is easy to say, but not so easy to do. The Apostle Paul clearly set out the qualifications for those who would be in a position of leadership within the churches, for a bishop must be blameless, as a steward of God, not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, Titus 1-7 Do you see this? Anyone who is in a position of leadership must not be quick-tempered, I cannot tell you how many places I have traveled around the world and how many pastors I have talked to who have confessed to me that they have a terrible problem with anger, I am talking about pastors of huge churches, they go to church and preach to thousands of people, then go home and destroy their wives and children through their uncontrolled anger, spousal abuse is at an all-time high within the general population, and, sadly, also within the church, this is the result of uncontrolled anger, an angry man stirs up strife and a furious man abounds in transgression, Proverbs 29 verse 22 Do you know what the word abounds means? It means a whole lot. When you sin in your anger, you don't sin just a little bit, you sin a whole lot. Have you ever noticed that anger is contagious? When you are in the presence of someone who is angry, it isn't long until you are angry yourself, make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man do not go lest you learn his ways and set a snare for your soul, one of the biggest problems for a Christian is his, her friends, God's word counsels us to stay away from chronically angry people, of course, if you are married to such a person, then you really have a problem, but we are going to share with you the answers, let us look at a couple of specific examples in the Bible of people sinning in their anger, and how God dealt with these sins, these examples give us a good look at exactly how God views our own uncontrolled anger, and Jacob called his sons and said, Gather together, that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days, in the days of the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit did not dwell inside people as he does in this day on this side of the cross, instead, the Holy Spirit would fall on people at certain times, and God would then speak directly through those people, this is the case here with Jacob. I want you to understand clearly, that from verse 2 onward it is not Jacob speaking, it is God speaking through Jacob, God is prophesying through Jacob as to what would happen in the future in the lives of all his sons, 
Beginning in verse 5 God speaks about two of his sons, Simeon and Levi, Simeon and Levi are brothers, instruments of cruelty are in their dwelling place, let not my soul enter their counsel, let not my honor be united to their assembly, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they hamstrung an ox, cursed be their anger, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel, clearly, God is very upset about the anger of Simeon and Levi. So much so that he does not even want his name to be associated with them. How many Christians are walking through life with bouts of uncontrolled sinful anger, still claiming to be Christians, bringing terrible disgrace onto the name of Christ. God doesn't want his name to be associated with such a person. More than that, God pronounces a curse on Simeon and Levi, and their descendants because of their anger, this is a generational curse, many of you reading this have such a curse on your own life because of the sinful anger of your forefathers, let's look at one more example, you are all aware of the story of Moses, Moses was raised in the palace of Pharaoh, he was raised in unbelievable wealth and power and prestige, then, he gave it all up to try to help his own people. Did the Israelites appreciate his great sacrifice on their behalf? They did not. They turned against Moses, and as a result he had to spend forty years herding sheep in the hot dry wilderness, living in a tent instead of a palace. Then God brought Moses back to Egypt to deliver the children of Israel out of their terrible slavery and bondage in Egypt, once again, every time something difficult happened, Moses got the blame. I have read that historians calculate that Moses led approximately one million people out of Egypt. Can you imagine living in the hot desert with one million complaining Jews? That's exactly what Moses had to do, finally he reached the end of his patience, God brought the people to a place where there was no water, and, as usual, they turned against Moses, and the people contended with Moses and spoke saying, if only we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. Why have you brought up the assembly of the Lord into this wilderness, that we and our animals should die here? And why have you made us come up out of Egypt, to bring us to this evil place? It is not a place of grain or figs or vines or pomegranates, nor is there any water to drink, complain, complain. Now the children of Israel were even complaining that Moses made them leave their position of slavery. What nonsense! They did not have access to any of the grain or figs or pomegranates while they were slaves. They were fortunate to get enough to eat to simply stay alive in those days, yet, they were complaining against Moses for leading them to freedom, we can see from later in this passage that Moses and Aaron were furious. So, Moses and Aaron went in before the Lord, and God told them to take Moses' rod and speak to a rock and that God would then bring forth water out of the rock, so Moses and Aaron took the rod, and Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock, and he said to them, Here now, you rebels! Must we bring water for you out of this rock? Numbers 20:10. Obviously Moses was angry, I have no doubt he was yelling at the people in his anger when he said Here now, you rebels! In fact, I have a suspicion that Moses actually had quite a bit more to say than actually got recorded here. He was furious, and in his anger, he disobeyed God and struck the rock with his rod instead of simply speaking to it, given all the difficult circumstances Moses and Aaron had had to deal with, wouldn't you think God would have understood Moses' sleep up and anger? Wouldn't you think God would have excused them? We make excuses for our anger all the time but God did not accept any excuses. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, because you did not believe me, to hallow, honor, me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them, instead of understanding Moses' anger and frustration, God gave Moses one of the worst punishments he could possibly have given him, God told Moses that he could not enter into the promised land. Moses and Aaron lived for one thing, to get into the promised land, this was their greatest desire, and in one moment of uncontrolled sinful anger, they lost forever the one thing they wanted the most. This is how seriously God regards your anger, 
I have no doubt that many of you reading this right now have missed out on God's best blessings in your own life because of your sinful anger, many of you are not receiving answers to your prayers because of your anger, many of you are unable to make the breakthroughs in your life that you so desperately need because of the consequences of your anger, God does not accept excuses for your sinful anger. He chastises you because of it, please sit down and soberly consider your own life, is it possible that you have a habit of sinning in your anger, losing your temper, that is hindering your walk with the Lord? Uncontrolled anger hinders you in many other ways as well, people lose their jobs because of anger, marriages and families are destroyed because of anger, relationships are damaged beyond repair because of anger, think for a moment, what role is sinful anger playing in your own life? Now let us look at the cure for sinful anger. The cure for anger for years I sought the Lord for an answer to anger, how would it be possible for people to prevent themselves from losing their tempers? How could rages be stopped in their tracks? Finally God gave the answer to Daniel and me directly, he taught us the lesson in two stages on two different days, the first stage is too long a story to write here but he taught us that when we sin in our anger, we give demon spirits the legal right to cling to us. The second and final stage in learning how to deal with anger was given to Daniel one day when he was driving into town to get the mail, we live 15 miles away from Clinton, our nearest town of any size, we get our mail at the post office in Clinton, Clinton is a town of 3000 people, there is one main highway that runs through the center of town, and the businesses are built on either side of the highway, people drive pretty fast on that road usually in excess of 50 miles per hour, on this particular day, Daniel went to town by himself to pick up the mail, as he was driving through the center of town on the highway, he witnessed an incident, he was not involved in it in any way, he simply witnessed the incident, he was driving along, and a young man in a pickup truck was driving along on the road going the same direction some distance in front of him, suddenly, an old man in an old car pulled right out onto the highway directly in front of the young man and proceeded to drive about 15 miles per hour. The old man never looked to see if anyone was coming. The young man in the truck had to slam on his brakes and skidded all over the road trying to keep from hitting the old man in the back, when he finally got his truck under control he was obviously furious. He pulled up beside the old man and honked his horn rolled down his window and shouted and shook his fist at the old guy, I think the old man was so deaf that he didn't even hear the young man, shortly, he pulled off the highway into another store parking lot, the young man squealed his tires and went on his way, now Daniel was not involved in this incident at all, however, when he arrived at the place in the road where it had happened, suddenly, he realized that he was furious, he was so mad he wanted to hurt someone or something, but he didn't have anything to be mad about. As he thought about this Daniel prayed, he said, Lord, why am I so furious? I don't have anything to be mad about, Rebecca isn't even with me, as Daniel asked the Lord that question, immediately the Holy Spirit flashed into Daniel's mind the scripture we started out with, be angry and do not sin, nor give place to the devil, if, 4 colon 26 27 the Lord went on to show Daniel that that word place, is a geographical term, your home is a place, the spot in the road where the younger man nearly had the accident was a place, when we get angry, and sin in our anger, such as that young man did, we give demon spirits the legal right to inhabit that place, so here is the key, demon spirits are cruising around all the time looking for a place where they can cause trouble. The instant we have the emotion of anger rise up in us, this emotion acts as a magnet for demon spirits of anger. Do you know what a magnet is? If I put some metal shavings on a desk and then held a magnet above them what would happen? The shavings would immediately jump up onto the magnet, a magnet attracts metal to it, in the same way, our emotion of anger attracts demon spirits of anger to us. This happens very fast, in less than one second. When we get angry, spirits of anger come flying and attach themselves onto us, on the outside of us, these spirits have the ability to inject more anger into us, they do this immediately, in a matter of seconds, think about it for a minute, remember the last time you got angry. When you first got angry, 
Within less than a minute after you first got angry, you were much more angry than you started out being, why? Because of the anger the spirits of anger were injecting into you, the goal of these spirits is to make you so angry that you lose control and sin, when you do, then they have the legal right to come inside you, when they come inside you, they then attempt to take you over and control your actions, now the fact is that demons hate human beings. Their one goal is to destroy us, that's why every person who loses control in their anger, attempts to self-destruct. They will lash out at the people who mean the most to them, they will commit violent actions that destroy their lives, etc. The demons inside of them are the force that is pushing them to do these things. Let's go back to Daniel for a moment, the young man in the pickup truck sent in his anger at the old man, as a result, he gave spirits of anger the legal right to that place in the road, when Daniel arrived at that place in the road, he literally drove into a cloud of anger demons, as soon as he arrived, those demons attached themselves to Daniel and injected anger into him, that's why, suddenly, Daniel was furious even though he had no reason to be mad at anything. The Lord showed Daniel that he must rebuke those spirits of anger and command them to disperse and get off of him, as soon as Daniel did this, his anger went away, have you ever been walking outside, and suddenly walked into a cloud of little insects hovering in one spot? That's the way anger demons do, when someone sins, they give these spirits the legal right to inhabit a place, and they hover in that spot in a cloud, just waiting for someone to come along. They can be hovering anywhere a spot in the road, at a table in a restaurant, a seat in a bus, train or plane, or a motel room, etc. How many times have you suddenly become angry for no reason at all? You just entered into a cloud of anger demons, rebuke them and send them on their way. There was a rather dramatic example of this principle in action a couple of years ago in Texas, the incident made all the news throughout this nation, in Texas. There was a married couple, both of them were very well educated. They were dentists, somehow, the wife came to the conclusion that her husband was cheating on her, so, one night, she followed him to a motel, she waited outside for a bit, then went into the motel herself, told the clerk at the front desk that she was his wife, and got a room key, she went to the room and opened the door and went in and found her husband in bed having sex with another woman. She stormed out of the motel and sat in her car, as she sat there, she got madder and madder, by the time her husband came out, she was so angry that she lost control and ran over him with her car, killing him, as a result, her life is totally destroyed. She is now sitting in prison for the rest of her life, she has lost her home, her family, her children, her dental practice and everything else, why? because the spirits of anger injected so much anger into her that she lost control and destroyed her own life, it was the demons inside her that pushed her into those actions, if she had been able to think clearly, I am sure she would never have done such a thing, but, as she sat there, and indulged in sinful thoughts in her anger, she allowed the entrance of the demons into her life, in the end, they destroyed her. Corinthians shows us that the battlefield in this spiritual warfare is actually in our mind, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, 2 Corinthians 10:35. Demon spirits can, from outside of us, inject thoughts and emotions into our minds, that's why we are commanded to take every thought captive, we must control what goes on in our minds, so here is the solution to anger, the instant we get angry, we must rebuke the spirits of anger and command them to get off of us and out of our lives at once in the name of Jesus. We must keep on commanding these spirits to leave until we feel our anger decreasing, and we can remain in control, then, we can pray and make a godly decision about what to do with the situation that made us angry in the first place, this is the way we can be angry and sin not, what is, for example, you are married to a spouse who flies into rages. Proverbs tells us that a soft answer turns away wrath, you must rebuke the demons of anger off of yourself and refuse to fight back, if you will remain quiet and control your own anger, 
Your spouse's rages will be of much shorter duration, if you become angry yourself, the whole situation will escalate out of control, let me give you some examples to help you understand this principle, example 1, I ministered this lesson in New York City, and the following night asked if there was anyone who had had the opportunity to deal with anger that day, a sister in the back was waving her hand with great vigor, I called on her, and here is her story, oh, sister Rebecca, that lesson on anger was just for me. You see, I have been sinning in my anger eight hours per day, five days per week for the last seven years. My goodness, whatever have you been doing? Was my reply, you see, I work in the complaint department for three utility companies, every person who calls me is furious, and I spend all day on the phone fighting with people, the Holy Spirit convicted me so strongly of my sin. So, this morning when I went to work, I was determined to stop sinning in my anger, I have five lines on my phone, as soon as eight o'clock came, all five lines lit up, I answered the first one and there was a furious man on the other end of the line, he was yelling and cussing at me, normally I would have reacted to him in anger, but I had learned the lesson, instead, I said, hold just a moment please and pushed the hold button, then I spoke out loud and said, now, you demons of anger, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, and command you to get off of that man and stay off of me, get out of here, get off this phone line and out of our conversation. As soon as I went back on the line the man was all calmed down, and I was able to quickly handle his problem without ever getting angry, all day long, every time someone came on the phone who was angry I put them on hold and rebuked the spirits of anger, I did not get angry once, and I was able to stay in control of the conversations, I was able to handle all the problems in a fraction of the time it normally took simply because I kept anger out of the situation, example 2. After ministering this lesson one night in Texas, a sister came up to me afterwards and said, you just explained what happened to me today, I work in sales, I am very good at what I do, I had to attend a sales meeting at the company I work for this morning, after the meeting, an incident took place in the room where the meeting was held, I witnessed the incident but was not involved in it in any way, two women became very angry at each other and started shouting at each other. Their argument turned violent and literally became a hair pulling contest, several other people had to intervene and pull them apart, when I left the room, I was all upset and out of sorts, but I really did not have any reason to be angry, I left and went to see my first client of the day, he is a man whom I know well, I have worked with him for several years, I was still upset when I arrived at his place of business, and quite frankly, I was having a hard time just being polite to him, quickly he stopped our conversation and said, wait a minute, I see that you have so much anger on you that I cannot do business with you, you wait right here, I am going to go into my back room and pray to my God about your anger, as he left to go pray, I realized that I had better hurry up and pray about my anger first as he is a Buddhist. I now realize that the spirits of anger brought into that sales meeting room by those two women fighting attached themselves to me, they injected anger into me, that's why I was angry without any reason, my client, being a Buddhist, could see into the spirit realm and saw those spirits of anger on me, now I know what to do, and in the future, I will not allow any such demons to cling to me, example 3, the next day after learning the lesson on anger, a young woman testified to the following, my husband and I have been married for five years, he is a traveling evangelist, for the first three years of our marriage, I traveled with him, then we had a baby, and I have had to stay at home, these last two years have been terrible. Each night after ministering, my husband calls me, and we always get into a fight, in fact, we have reached the point where we do nothing but fight. Just last week we started talking about getting a divorce as our marriage seems to be impossible, then, last night I heard your lesson about the spirits of anger, after I got home from the meeting last night, my husband called as he always does, before he could say anything I said, just a minute, I want to pray before we talk, then I said, in the name of Jesus I take authority over every demon spirit of anger. I command you to get off of my husband and myself right now, and stay out of our conversation.
Then we talked for three hours, and didn't fight once. We now believe we can make our marriage work, we just needed to know that our fight wasn't with each other, it is against unseen spirits. Example 4, this testimony was given by a young man, I have always had a very quick temper, I went through the prayers at the altar call last night but honestly didn't think they would make much difference, today I had to go to the airport to pick up a friend. As I was leaving the parking lot I had a disagreement with the person taking the money for our parking, I managed to keep my cool, much to my surprise, but I knew the other person was upset, as I drove out of the booth, that person brought the gate crashing down on the trunk of my car. It put a huge dent and scrape in it. I pulled away from the gate and parked and went back to deal with the problem, as I did so, I remembered what you said about rebuking demons of anger. I was furious, and was going to go back and beat the guy up. However, I decided to command all demons of anger to get off of me at once in the name of Jesus, I did this over and over several times on my way back to the gate, by the time I got there, my anger was gone, and I was able to calmly ask him to call his supervisor and got the whole situation dealt with calmly and in a short time, I had rebuked the spirits of anger off the gatekeeper as well and he ended up apologizing to me, believe me, this is a radical change from how I would normally have handled such a situation. I guess it does work after all, example 5, a testimony from a sister in Texas, I have a daughter who is going through a most trying phase, every time I ask her to do something she throws her nose into the air and says no. Instantly I get furious and we have a big fight about it, in fact, our relationship was being destroyed as we did nothing but fight, then, last night I heard your lesson on anger, I was strongly convicted by the Lord about my anger towards my daughter, today, I had to ask my daughter to do something, nothing big or difficult, and as usual she stuck her nose in the air and said no. Immediately I started to get angry, but I remembered the lesson, and instead of saying anything to her I spoke out loud and said, no. You demons of anger, you get off of me and my daughter at once in the name of Jesus. No sooner were the words out of my mouth than my daughter turned and came back into the room and said, Mama, I don't know why I said no. Of course I'll do it we never fought at all. Do you see what was happening here? The child was going through a habit or a phase of saying no to everything, each time she did this the mother became furious. The demons of anger in the mother then spread onto the child and further manifested themselves as rebellion, thus the stage was set for a big fight between mother and daughter, the more they fought, the more the demons had legal ground to destroy their relationship, all it took was for the mother to break the cycle. Do you have a bad temper and episodes of uncontrolled anger in your own life? If so, then please pray the following prayers, and give the following commands. Speak out loud and very firmly, prayer, the first step is always to confess the sin, your sins of anger have allowed demons of anger to come into your life, pray as follows, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ I confess to you that I have sinned against you in my anger, I ask you to forgive me those sins and to cleanse me from them, I thank you for it in the name of Jesus, command, in the name of Jesus. I command all demon spirits of anger that came into me through my sins of anger to get out of my life right now and forever. Prayer, many of you have inherited demons of anger from your forefathers along with a generational curse as a result of their sinful anger, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge to you that my forefathers have sinned against you in their anger, I humbly ask you to separate me from all the sins of anger that have come into my life through inheritance. I also humbly ask you to break all generational curses off my life and the lives of my children that are from you, I thank you for it in the name of Jesus command, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command all demons of anger that came into my life through inheritance to get out of me right now and forever. I also command all inherited demons of anger to get out of my children right now and forever, in the name of Jesus. Command, in the name of Jesus Christ. I command all generational curses of anger to be broken off of my life and the lives of my children right now and forever, I command every demon associated with those curses to get out of my life and the lives of my children right now and forever in the name of Jesus.
Now you have the legal right to command the following, in the name of Jesus I command all temper to be broken off of my life right now. Note, this does not mean that you will never get angry again, but now you have the advantage, you have knowledge. From this point on, every time you get angry, you have a choice to make, 1, you will instantly command all demon spirits of anger to get off of you until your anger decreases, or, 2, you will not command the demons to get off, and most likely you will end up sinning, please pray this prayer, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I earnestly ask you to help me, from this point on, every time I get angry, I am asking you to have the Holy Spirit instantly and violently shove the remembrance of what I have learned into my conscious thought, in the very first second of time that I get angry, make me aware that I need to immediately rebuke the demons of anger and command them to get off of me, I ask you for this and thank you for it in the name of Jesus. If you will be faithful to deal with these spirits of anger, you will find your whole life changing, remember, our battle is not against flesh and blood, it is against the unseen spirit realm.